All right, we are live. Um, okay. I'm going to tweet it. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I just got a and, um, notification. Should I be tweeting this as well? Yeah, tweet it. Yep. Yep. Hello, Donna. How are you going? Let me know if you guys can hear this and if it looks okay. I'll, I'll uh, go out onto the balcony and show you the view. This is how I normally start is like I show people the view of the beach. I'm not sure why. I just like looking at the beach myself. Sure. Um, this, this is Troy Dean. Say hello to Troy Dean, everybody. Hey, hey. Hey, Groovers. How are you? Welcome. Can you guys um, give us a comment? Tell me where you guys are signing in. Hey, Heather. S t tell me where you guys are signing in from. Did you, did you, Tanya, yes, I definitely missed you. Definitely miss you, Tanya. Um, I'm just going to put this link on Facebook. And I'm going to turn my uh, speakers down. Alrighty. Might not work. Hey, Jonathan, how are there you? Go. Oh, there we go. We've got some love hearts. Brisbane. Oh, Bris Vegas. I lived there for 25 years. Great place. Bris Vegas. Hey, Jimmy. <coughs> All right. Shutting down Facebook. Oh. <laughs> There's Troy. Little Tokyo too. Oh, that's cool. I, yeah, I have to get. I have to get there. Um, man, I'm so slack. I've been meaning to. It's a co-working space in Brisbane. Where do you work from, Troy? You're just at home, right? No, no, no. I've got a. Um, I've got, I work out of a co-working space in Pran in Melbourne called Revolver Creative, which is freaking oh, awesome. We've got a private office here, but it's amazing, man. You got to it, next time you're in Melbourne, you have got to check it out. It's awesome. Yeah, I know a lot of people who work at it. So, is that where you are right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I walked up to work this morning from my house, and. Um, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> it's, it's great. There are about like 25 different companies in here, some big, some small, a bunch of offices, like a bunch of offices with um, shit, you know, hot desks. We've actually got a private office because we make videos and do podcasting. And I'm about to actually take over the recording studio downstairs as well, which is kind of <laughs> cool. So I'll be using that for podcasting and voiceovers. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Right, so we've got Troy Dean here um, from WP Elevation. I'll, I'll get him to introduce himself in a minute. Can you guys give me some love hearts if, the, if Troy's audio was coming through okay when he was talking before? And um, How do oh, I... hey, that's Troy there. So if you guys want to follow Troy, you can click on his little name there and, and give him a follow. How do I, how do I give love Tom hearts Walks. on the thing, man? How do, I, how do I make love hearts on the screen? I just tap the screen. Oh. But, but if, if you're tapping it right now um, for yourself, that's, yeah. I think that's a little weird. I mean, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Self love, right. it's all good. But okay. um, it'd be better if other people were loving it, not not you. Okay, um, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Someone just said Tom Morks speaks highly of me. D did he speak highly of me or highly of Troy? Either way, Tom's Tom's a legend. He made me famous. Did he? So um, how did he make you famous? He he convinced me to um, put my first book on Amazon instead of just putting up on my website for free. Oh, is that the guy that you did? Is that the guy that did the launch strategy with you? The, the book launch yeah. strategy? Yeah, right. Hey, dude, by the way, I saw this morning, congratulations, 6,000 copies of uh, Seven Day Startup to China. Yeah, it's, it's just the, um, like the translation rights. So, that, so they pay for like the, the first certain amount of copies and then you get like an ongoing commission wow. for the remainder. So, Sweet. Yeah. Like, I think last week we sold Czech and this week China. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Um, <coughs> not recurring. <laughs> but leveraged right at once, sell lots of copies. Yeah. It's sort of passive in a way. Like the agent just does the whole thing and just sends me, sends me the money, which is which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, it was me. Oh, thank you. That's cool. Tom, Tom's a legend. Alrighty. So if you guys um, could share this, click the little man icon down there. Uh, oh, yeah. It might be a man or woman icon. Oh yeah. And share it on Twitter on Periscope. That'd be great. I've I've got a bunch of questions I can ask Troy. Um, but I might start. Actually, I might start by trying to get rid of this reflection. Man, I should do this before the call. All right, just give me one second. I'm going to see if closing this blind gives me um better non-reflection. Sure, man. I'll just uh I'll just entertain can you, everyone. Can you tell me if that looks looks better. Yeah, not much difference. A little bit better. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Yeah, that's better. That is better. All right, cool. That looks a bit. That looks a bit better. All right, so, um, Troy, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hey, I'm Troy Dean. I'm from Melbourne. I'm from um, St Kilda in Melbourne, and I've got a business that sells WordPress plugins to WordPress developers, and also a leveraged business coaching program to WordPress freelancers called WP Elevation. And um, I'm really super passionate about recurring revenue because over the last couple of years, I've transitioned out of client services into a completely 100% recurring revenue business model. And um, 
that's kind of the story that I'm telling now, man. I just want to help as many people as I can create recurring revenue because it just frees up your headspace and just, you know, gives you a whole bunch of choices that you didn't have before when you're chasing clients. So that's, um, yeah, that's who I am and what I'm up, what I'm up to. Very cool. And, and, um, I spoke at your little event in Melbourne a couple of months ago, which is, I think, the first recurring revenue workshop you did. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Um, so we had um, uh, that was a, that was a pretty cool um, event. We had about forty five small business owners in a room for a full day, walking through the recurring revenue roadmap. We had a bunch of guest speakers come in. Yourself, uh, Gary Tramer from Lead Chat, Ed Dale, David Jennings, and um, Nathan Chan from Founder Mag, uh, and. Um, we spent, you know, all day teaching recurring revenue and asking questions and doing lots of research and learning as much as we could uh, about um, about the challenges that business owners have with recurring revenue and, and the the really it was kind of a a proof of concept. Is there a problem worth solving? Can we actually put together a product? It's it was just complete market research exercise really. And um, turns out there definitely is a market. We're still trying to work out product market fit. Um, which is, you know, part of the reason that we're trying to have this conversation with as many people as possible. Yeah, and there was a couple of cool things about that event. The uh, one was um, m m me meeting Ed Dale. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, he's a legend. <laughs> Ed's Ed's a legend. Ed was like one of the first, the very first. Like I hadn't thought about this actually until that event, but he was one of the first guys I saw doing content marketing before people were really calling it content marketing. He was just doing the challenge and doing those videos. And he was just so good at it. And he had this huge following for that. For that. It was like a movement of online marketers. And yeah. like, that was like, that was like the, the best example of content marketing you could imagine. Absolutely. Um, so that was cool. The, the other cool thing about it is, is it was, um, there was a lot of different businesses there. It's not just online internet marketing types. There was accountants and lawyers and, and a whole range of businesses, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and that was, that's part of the, that's like one of the most exciting things for me is to be, talking to people who actually have, you know, offices and bricks and mortar business. And, you know, like there was a, a, a girl there that owns a dance studio. She, she runs dance classes and she's, you know, wanting to create recurring revenue. So that's a real challenge for me is helping those businesses create recurring revenue. Because in our space, in the web kind of design space, it's a pretty, I reckon it's a pretty clear path to creating recurring revenue. And you've kind yeah. of been the poster boy for that. You've shown, you've shown the way there. But in other business models, there are lots of opportunities and it really forces me to get creative and, and uh, work with, with people on different business models. So it's really exciting. I'm really enjoying it. Cool. Well, I've got a lot of questions. Um, sure, man. I'm wondering, if, I'm wondering if the people on this call have any questions. So if, if you guys are on the call, um, got any questions, then throw them into the comments. Any, anything to do with recurring revenue at all? I've got a bunch of things I can run through, but I'd rather, since we're doing this live on Periscope, that you guys ask the questions and um, I'll fire those at Troy. I think, I think Troy's got his phone there as well, so if you put any questions into the chat, he, he should see them if he's not too distracted with all the screens he's looking at. I'm watching it. I'm watching it. It's like being in the control room at the moment. I've got two 27-inch monitors in front of me plus the phone. <laughs> the iPad's going off doing its own thing. And I've even got, check this out, my, one of my favourite devices – an old school calculator, man. <laughs> Whoa, that is old school. I haven't known one of those since high school. <laughs> I love it. I punch around <laughs> it all day. <laughs> right, we had a question there uh, for coaches. How do you see recurring revenue fitting in? Was um, can you just clarify that question? Is this like like business coaching? Is that the sort of thing we're talking about here? Um, it normally, if I ask a question, it takes a while to respond because people sort of have to do it on their phone. But do, yeah. do, do you have any coaches you've you've worked yeah, with and plenty and thoughts so, on that? So coaching is really easy because. Coaching is, um, you know, instead of just trading time for money, and I actually think this is one of the biggest opportunities for anyone who's trading time for money, is instead of trading time for money, so instead of saying, well, I'm, you know, 200 bucks an hour to coach you and you can hire me per hour, start selling an outcome rather than your time. So, you know, put together a business transformation program, which is a, you know, six month program. And instead of 200 bucks an hour, it's 10 grand for the six months. And I mean, first of all, you only get people signing up who are serious about committing and getting a result because they're going to invest 10 grand. So they want a return on that investment. And second of all, the, the kind of the, the way that you structure it is that if you look at the hours, the hours given over that six month period, the client actually ends up with more time than if they were just paying you 200 bucks an hour. So there's an incentive for them. And then you just put them on a monthly payment. So instead of just paying you ad hoc, they actually make a commitment 
put them on a subscription payment so the money's coming in every month and then just set up some structures with some shared calendars or or use like a schedule once or a calendly something where they can book in their own appointments. So when I ran a coaching program for WP Elevation for our Platinum members and you know every week I would just get notifications in my calendar to tell me who'd booked in for a call and there's no all the invoicing and payments all fully automated um, our payments were all done through Infusionsoft and they get an invoice every time they pay. So it's, you know, I don't have to raise invoices. I don't have to chase money. I don't have to actually do any banking. Um, and that's one of the biggest benefits of recurring revenue is you automate all the admin stuff and then try and put as many tools and automation in place as you can so that the client, and I actually learned this from Ed Dale, when you sign up for a coaching program, it's actually your responsibility to get the most out of that coaching program. It's not the coach's responsibility. Like I have a personal trainer I see twice a week at the gym. If I don't turn up, he's not gonna drive to my house and drag me out of bed, right? So if you sign up for a coaching program, it's your responsibility to make sure you've got a link to your coach's calendar and then book in your appointment every week or every fortnight to see your coach. And so the coaching program for me was pretty hands off, really. I just turn up 10 minutes before the call, revisit my notes, think through the, the, the client's business and then get on the call you know, teach them and, and help them and coach them. And the rest of the whole thing is, is pretty automated. So I, there's definitely low hanging fruit with coaches. Cool. Um, so a couple of questions came in while you were talking. One was from Tanya. She, she does sales coaching for corporates. And her question, I like this question because I, I, I think this could go either way, but, but she says, do I incorporate uh, membership with training in, in terms of her her coaching offering. So, so is she doing like a recurring service that that means you get you get a community or a membership as well as training at the same time, or is that is that two separate products? Well, I, so I would um, I would definitely be promoting and driving the membership, and so I'd be saying to a corporate, look, you know, you can you know pay me. I'm just going to make up some num I'm going to make up some numbers, right? But let's say you can pay five grand a day, and I'll come in and I'll coach your sales staff in your office. But what happens is at the end of that day, your staff are going to be really motivated, really inspired, and they might change their behaviour for a couple of weeks, and then they're going to fall back into their old habits. That's just human nature. So instead of paying me five grand for the day, why don't you know we structure a program that it's a fifteen hundred dollar investment for that day, and then it's five hundred dollars a month, and all of your staff get access to this community. So we come out, we run the workshop for that day, and then every month uh, they have access to you know the community group, which you could just set up in a private Facebook group if you wanted. Um, they get training videos every month, they get new material, they get accountability calls as a group, um, and so there's there's a, a far greater benefit for the client. And there's because there's ongoing accountability and ongoing coaching, and there's a, a far greater benefit for you because you're essentially amortising the cost of, of that investment over a 12 month period, rather than just getting a chunk of change up front, going away, having a small impact for a couple of days, and then everyone goes back to their bad habits. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, Jonathan said information versus trans transformation. Yeah, so. exactly. That's spot on. Um, yep. So, so Ta I, I want to come back to that. Um, I'll come back to your question, Tanya. I've got that down here. Um, I wonder if some people get that wrong though by by including membership when people don't really love membership, don't really want membership. Um, like I've seen examples where people have got like a software product, they've got three or four different plans for that software. And then like the highest level plan is, you know, you get the software, but you also get the membership and the coaching, the training. And I think, well, like do people actually want that? Or are you just trying to like put a package in there that's that's gonna be more money? Like Like how do you know, that, that you're giving them something they, they want or, or you're just like bolting on a membership onto something that where it doesn't belong? It's really interesting and, uh, it's, and it's a great question. Uh, are you familiar with Ryan Levesque at all? Yeah. So he wrote a book called Ask and he's got a software called um, Survey Funnels where he basically puts together marketing funnels and, and they're all survey and depending on the answer, depending on, you, you get one question, depending on how you answer that question, you're redirected down a particular part of the funnel and then at the okay. end of all of your answers, you're presented with the exact same product that answers your, the, the exact right product that answers your questions. Now he's also got a private Facebook group or a private mastermind group, right? So get this, it's either way, it's, and I did some fishing around, it's $97 a month to either be uh, to either buy his software and get access to his Facebook group or to access his Facebook group and get the software for free. So either <laughs> way, you're getting, you're getting the same outcome. You're getting the, the software and the community, but there are two sales pages and there are two different yep. funnels set up. So he's just s essentially selling people what they want, but it's the end, the, the end result is exactly the same. 
That's that's really funny you should say that because I, I'm thinking about doing something with a seven-day startup com- community that, that I have on Facebook and I've got a few ideas. One is, is to have a standalone community. Another one is to do a seven-day startup course. Another one is to do a content machine course, which is my new book. Yep. Um, and the way I'm thinking about it is, well, if I can have a, an annual membership that is a reasonable price, you know, this, the sort of amount of money you'd expect to pay for a course, then why don't I just have three different sales pages and say, look, if you want to buy the content machine course, then the course is inside the membership and that's how you get access to it. You have to pay an annual fee um, and that's the deal. And um, I guess even if you don't want to participate in that membership, then that's still the only way you get the course. Yeah. So we're, we're about to roll out a new uh, blueprint course for WP Elevation in September. And the model that we're going to be adopting is you can either, uh, it's, it's basically you can buy it up front and get six month access to the community, or you can just join the community and get the course when you join the community. But it's a minimum, either way, it's a minimum commitment of six months. And essentially the right. reason we're doing that is because some people just don't want a monthly payment. Some people just want to pay up front. So why, yeah. not, why not give them that opportunity? I, okay, I have, I have a question about that, but I'll, um, it's about churn. So, so, so don't let me forget that. Sure. Um, but I want to get back to Tanya's question. I think it's going to be a difficult one to answer, but, but she was talking about the corporate sales stuff and her question was, do I charge per person or do I offer a package? I assume, I assume that means like a package to the company. So um, yeah, it's a really good question and it just depends on the numbers. Like here's the thing, if somebody, wa- it's, it's like, I always think it's like yoga. If you, wanna, if you want to be, if you want to master yoga, then you have one-on-one yoga training so that the trainer can really hone in on your technique and, that, and you're gonna pay a premium for that. Whereas if you just want to go to yoga to kind of stretch and stay limber, then you just go to group yoga classes and you don't pay as much. So with the sales training stuff, I would be working with the client, working with the corporate to work out how many staff they've got. And then you just got to crunch the numbers and make sure it makes sense. Obviously, one-on-one sales coaching with one particular sales staff member who might be really underperforming, that's going to, that's going to take more effort and more resources on Tanya's behalf. So she needs to charge a premium for that. But if you can train five mm. staff in one workshop... Then it's cheaper for the for the corporate per head. So I'd be try, I'd be yeah. actually be trying to sell the group to the corporate. So do you, do you think corporates are used to paying per head for something? You know, as opposed to paying like an overall price for something, and that wouldn't wouldn't be a problem. So that so they they're used to paying per head, but they're used to getting a discount if they put multiple heads in that program. Yeah. Yeah, so this yeah. is what, what Joe Polizzi at the Content Marketing Institute does. He's got a whole bunch of content marketing courses on their website, but his target market is not you and I. His target market is IBM, who will buy 500 seats to his content marketing course. And they get, like if you and I buy it, it might be two grand a seat for his course. But if IBM buy it, it might be, you know, might be, I don't know, 400 bucks a seat, but they're buying 500 seats at a time. Cool. Um, jo- Jonathan, I think it was Jonathan asked a question, do upfront payments count as um, recurring revenue in your accounting system. And, and I, w- I want to have a stab at this question before you do. Go for uh, it. Because there's, there's a couple of things going on here. One is when when people, uh, Tanya says, uh, great answer too. So, um, so, so one is when people do their income reports and they say, uh, you know, this month we've made X amount of money and they count money that they haven't actually made yet. And I know that goes on. That really worries me. Like I, I think if you're, if you're selling a year's worth of something and you've only got a month of money, then you only should be counting a month, you know, in, in, your, in your income report or in your financials. You, sh- you definitely shouldn't be counting money you haven't made yet. So, so that's the first thing I would say. Um, the other thing is, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, well, actually... Do you want to have a crack at the question? Well, so it, so it depends. So in Australia, there are two. It, it really depends on your accounting model, right? In Australia, there are two ways that you can uh, run your accounting on the cash basis or the accruals basis. So the cash basis is exactly what you said. When we receive yeah. cash or spend cash, that's when we account for it. The yeah. accruals basis is when we raise an invoice. So if I if I bill you for two thousand dollars, but you're going to pay me, you know, um, monthly, then uh, and so you're going to pay me $2,000 over a 12-month period, but you're going to pay me every month. If I'm working on the accruals basis, well, as soon as you get that invoice, I have to declare $2,000 worth of income. Now, most small yeah. businesses, so that is most businesses doing, you know, kind of, and I'm not exactly sure what the ruling is here in Australia, but I think, I think if you're turning over more than $5 million a year, then you actually have to go on the accruals basis. You have to report on the accruals basis. But if you're under that threshold, then you, you choose whether or not you report on cash or accruals. Yeah, I, but 
I think for, for this kind of business where, you know, the, the retention is always such a massive challenge and, and we'll talk about that, I, I think it's insane to, to, to count that money, like regardless of, of whether you're accounting on an accruals basis, I think it's insane to count that money as money you've earned. Um, plus, I think the majority of people listening to this and in our audience are going to be under $5 million a year. Yeah. That's right, and and, and and probably should be ca- accounting on a cash basis. But I mean, I'm not an accountant, so definitely yep. don't take my advice on accounting. Yep. Um, uh, the, the, the only thing I'll say there, the only caveat there is, unless it's contracted. Like, if you actually sign someone up for a 12 month contract and they've committed to spending two thousand dollars over that 12 months, and it's contracted, then the re- the reason this matters is because, and it probably doesn't apply to our market. But the reason this matters, if you ever go to sell a business or, or raise money, the, one of the first things they'll look at is your your contracted annu, annuity, what they call a contracted annuity income. So how much income have you actually got contracted over the next 12 months? And if you're yeah. reporting on the accruals basis and you say, well, look, these contracts have been signed, the invoice has been raised, then you can actually count that as income. I I get what you're saying. I think I think the whole like contracted thing is is becoming less and less relevant with online businesses and yeah. with smaller businesses. Yep. Um, the, the other thing, I, I want to come back to the contract thing specific, specifically when we talk about churn because there's something really interesting there. Yeah. The, the other thing I wanted to say, Jonathan, is um, when we sign an annual customer as as a, you know, as a whole year in advance, because we do that, I think we, we give people two months free if they sign up yep. as an annual. Yep. In our income report, and, and, and as far as we're concerned, we've only earned one twelfth of that payment. So, so with WP Curve, if you earn, if you so if we sign up someone at nine hundred dollars a year, um, I account nine hundred dollars by twelve for this month's monthly run rate. So, we, so we, we use monthly run rate, and and I only account what what I feel like we've earned because they can just leave at any time. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the way Bear Metrics do it as well. Like if you look at their software as a service analytics platform when they calculate monthly recurring revenue if they have annual plans in there they just divide the annual ones by 12 so if, if you want to get a good this is not a good accounting metric but it's a good metric for where you're actually adding your business and how much you're likely to make next month or like like what sort of size of customers you have then yeah. i think uh divided by 12 is, is the way to go yep now um the contract thing this is interesting to me as well so first of all I know people that run these sort of businesses that, that are recurring and they'll do what you said and that they'll say, okay, $1,000 for a year and you pay every month and you've got a contract where you have to pay every month. And I've spoken to people with those sort of businesses and they still have a cancellation rate of around 10%, like a mm. card decline rate of about 10% per month. Mm. And that is a pretty high, like that's a pretty high churn rate, mm. even if they weren't contracted in each month. Mm. Um, that's, I mean, that I would consider that to be churn. And it, even though they're contracted in, it doesn't seem to make a difference. So, so what are your mm. thoughts on that? So there's a few issues there. I mean, first of all, card declines, we don't treat card declines as churn unless the customer actually cancels. So our policy is we retry the card three times. We retry yep. every two days. After three tries, then we stop retrying and we send the client an automated email that says, hey, your payments failed. We're about to cancel your membership. Um, we give them another 48 hours, I think, to go and update their card details. If they don't update their card details, then we cancel them. And at that point, that counts as churn because they're actually locked out of the community and they can't access the resources anymore. Um, right. So I don't know, I should know, but I don't know what our card decline rate is per month. Um, well, well, the, the card, de- that's the interesting thing because, because I get what you're saying with the card decline. And if they go through that process and they come back into the process, then that's fine. Yeah. But what's the rate of actual cancellation, I assume from people who just don't want to um, service the contract anymore, but but they're not upfront about it and they're just just letting it expire or they're, you know, yeah. doing something with the card. Yeah, so that so in our case, you actually, there's, in our case, you have to actually tell us that you want to cancel and we actually cancel your account for you. So there's no, you can't just log in and push the cancel button and cancel your account. And the reason yeah. we do that is because we want to survey you. I mean, we there's never any question. We always cancel people if they want to cancel because that's totally cool. But we have an exit survey that we run people. So hang on. So, so if, if they're in a contract for 12 months... You let them cancel if they want to cancel. No, so we don't. We we have very few. Uh, with video user manuals, we have quite a few people who are on annual plans, and they're yep. they're just charged up front. I mean, they basically pay up front and. Right, right, but but do you do the payment plan thing? No, so so with so with video user manuals, you can pay monthly or you can pay annually, and if you pay yep. annually, then you get two months free. Um, but and if you pay monthly, you can leave whenever you want. If right? you pay monthly, you can leave whenever you want. But if you pay right, annually, yeah. like if you pay annually now and you want to cancel in three months' time, you ain't getting that prorated money back. You ain't getting a refund back. Oh, of course, of course, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so, so contracted is like – we actually don't do contracts because contracts creates a whole bunch of legal overhead. And contracts are yeah. really weird because like contracts are like what gyms do. So Fitness First are famous for doing um, contracts and making it really hard to get out of the contracts. And then when you actually do leave the contract, part of their contract is they will bill you for an additional month after you've cancelled your membership. And that's something that you agree to when you join Fitness First. I mean, it's total highway robbery um, and, you know, people agree to it. That's right, but it's a good business. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It is. It is. And 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 I think the biggest challenge with recurring business is retention and churn. So yep. um, let's let, let, let's get into that. How, sure. how do you deal with churn? It's a great question, man. And I wish I had the answer, but I'm learning. I tell you, some of the things I'm learning about retention. The first thing is. Um, you need to give, so, so let's talk about a membership community because that's essentially what WP Elevation is, right? We essentially have, we essentially sell transformations, right? And um, from, from what that other, that, that other reader said before, that other viewer said before, we essentially sell transformations. So we sell the idea that we can transform your WordPress freelance business. And the way that we increase retention and try and reduce churn is we have, so we have things like challenges. We have a 14 day challenge that we've just launched. So every 14 days we roll out a new challenge and we challenge our members to implement something in their business that's gonna make a difference. Uh, we have competitions. We have a leaderboard in our members website. So at the end of every month, whoever's on top of the leaderboard wins a free coaching call with my good self. And that's based on forum activity, how much people are sharing, how much they're helping each other out and any success stories. Uh, we have live events. You know, we're like we try and meet our members at various places around the world and we try and get our members to organise their own meetups around the world as well. Um, and that's a really good way of, of nurturing community. Because here's the thing, I learned this a long time ago, um, that people originally join for the information, but they'll stay in a recurring revenue membership for the community. So having a, a members forum, it could be a private Facebook group or it can be a WordPress forum, having a a members forum is absolutely key. We know that the people who bounce out of our program within the first 60 days generally haven't been in the forums. Once they get in the forums, they're more likely to stick because they meet other members and they form those relationships. So mm, having, that's sorry, having, having, I'm, um, I, sorry I'm, I'm actually just taking these notes because <laughs> for my own membership, this is good, good stuff. Yeah, cool. So having, having action steps. So instead of just going, here's a bunch of information that we think is cool, you go, Hey, here's a new way of writing proposals. Your homework over the next 14 days is to practice writing some proposals and share it with other members in the forum, right? So actually giving, yep. them, giving them homework and giving them action steps, running competitions. Do you, do you um, how active are you in making sure they take the action steps? Like, do oh. you have a staff member that goes in there or yeah, do you we, do it yourself? Yeah, or? we do. So Jin, who you met at our, our yep. event, so she's our community manager. So she's in the forums, you know, every second day, moderating conversations and directing traffic. Um, we're also about to. Launch. I want. I want gin. <laughs> it's funny. We we say everyone needs a gin. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we also say gin is gin is my tonic, which is a you know bit of a oh, word. very good. Know, boom boom, bit of a dad joke. Um. So, uh, but the other thing is, we're just about to start a Facebook group. So we actually polled our audience and said, "Hey, what if we shut the forums down and started a Facebook group?" And it was really interesting. Fifty fifty split. The, the, because about only about 40% of our members are in the forums, right? So right. Um, we're like, well, what's going on with the rest of you? Why aren't you in the forums? Well, they're just people that don't like forums. They're just never going to use the forum. So we're going to start yeah. a Facebook group. The people who use the forums, they came back to us and said, please don't shut the forums down. I love it. I spend, you know, I'm in there every day. And I said, okay, why don't we keep the forums and run a Facebook group to re-engage those people who aren't in the forums? Because some people just love Facebook groups. So yeah. little trick here in the Facebook group, we're going to have a posting schedule. So Monday is all about goal setting. You share your goal of the week with everyone in the, in the Facebook group and you make it public. Tuesday is going to be Tactical Tuesday. So I'm just going to drop in a, a tactic in the Facebook group on Tuesdays. Wednesday is going to be check-in Wednesday. So how are you going with that goal that you set Monday? Have you made any progress? Do you need any help from anyone? Thursday is Q&A day. So ask, ask me anything in, on Thursdays and I'll answer all day Thursday. And Friday is, a, is you know, crunch day. So hey, how did, that, how did you go with that goal you were going to set this week? Um, if you haven't achieved it, that's cool. But why? Are you procrastinating? Do you need some help? Are you afraid of you know, implementing? What is it? So that's going to be the structure for the week. And that's designed to make sure they log in the Facebook group every day. That's very cool. Um, I'm going to, I had a comment here, finance first is what they call fitness first. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, I, I'm just going to be totally selfish here because I'm interested in this membership stuff and, and I think um, uh, a, a lot of other people on this call are as well. So 
Tanya says, is that the same structure for the forum? I assume you don't do that in the forum because people are more likely to see the notifications on Facebook and, and jump right. on that. So in the forum, we have, a, we have a separate forum for each part of what we teach. So we teach a thing called the Blueprint and it's broken up into six modules. So we have a separate forum for each module of the Blueprint where you can actually go and talk about the, that specific part of the Blueprint. We also have a success stories forum where people can post their success stories and we have a general forum which is where most of the activity is just in general chit chat uh, and we have the 14 day challenge forum where people have to post up um, the proof that they've actually done the 14 day challenge so we had a question about that do you boot people out if they don't do it no i mean it's no. like you know would fitness first cancel your membership if you didn't turn up to the gym <laughs> <laughs> not finance first would definitely do that they'd, they'd take the money <laughs> um so the, so the yeah, that's really so, interesting so the interesting thing about membership is that I've had some amazing success stories and testimonials from people who have joined our program, they've gone through our training, they've implemented, they've never posted in the forum, but they've had amazing mm. success. So you, you just, you really have to listen to your members and there's not one size fits all. Your membership really needs to be as flexible as possible. Well, one of the problems is forums are so fucking shit. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I'm in, I'm in forums and they're just, they're just so shit ass the way they're structured. They're so old. Like they just make it so hard yeah. for you to go in and pay attention to stuff that you need to pay attention to. Yeah. And that's, that's why I find like the engagement in the Facebook group I've got is amazing because yep. if someone goes in there and posts something, they're going to get notifications every time yep. someone replies to that post because Facebook knows that you give a much bigger shit about stuff that you've participated in than other stuff that other people are doing. So, so that's, that's part of the challenge with forum is the is the software you use and, and whether or not it can actually like behave in a way that humans want to behave in. Correct. You make a very good point, and it was very eloquently put. Um, <laughs> the we're about to roll out a whole new members website in September when we're relaunching our our blueprint course. We're actually closing the doors on WP Elevation at the end of this week for a month, and we're going to completely rebuild it. We're just closing for new members. It won't affect existing members, but we're just closing for new members, and then we're relaunching on the second of September. And we're we're actually using BuddyPress, which is a social yeah. networking solution for WordPress. So we're trying to make it more social and more interactive for that exact reason right i was looking at buddy press yesterday i think i think i'm gonna when i did a community before which by the way totally failed um i used discourse and i was i was i set set that up as well and i think it does a really good job of just being able to tag people and getting that notification when someone's replied to your thread it's pretty nice it's not wordpress it's very hard to customize because it's written in like pearl or something crazy yep yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's a nice piece of software. It's, yep. it's just a really tricky thing. There's nothing really good out there that, like BuddyPress looks kind of scary to me. It looks, it, it, it does all of that stuff, but it looks like really, um, like there's, like you need to you need to sort of learn it and be in there. There's, there's a fair bit of overhead to it. Yeah, there is. Um, check out the uh, this. Is, I mean, complete transparency. This is what we're doing. Check out the Buddy Boss theme. It's a premium theme for BuddyPress. Um, it's basically the only thing worth using in in you know in BuddyPress. So just install okay. a. It's a pr it's a pr premium theme. Just spin up the Buddy Boss theme and see what it does out of the box. And and that's actually going to give you a far greater head start than just using BuddyPress on its own. Yeah, okay, good tip, okay. Um, and sorry for swearing before, guys. I think I, I swore when I got angry about uh, forums. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it just came out. Um, Zen 4 Tanya Can you mention Zen 4 I, I mean, I've, I've used it. It just seems like old school um, forum software to me, and I just I just think it, it's hard work. But but do you have an opinion on that, Troy? On? Zen 4 it's forum software. I think it might be like a spin-off from vBulletin. It's pretty much vBulletin. Yeah, I don't, I don't know it, sorry. Um, there, there's a there's a brand new one that's just come out for WordPress. Actually, there's a it's like it's it's competing with with BuddyPress, and it looks really amazing. And I just can't remember the name of it. Let me just see if I can dig it up. Uh, it's just been released like the last few days, and um, it's f it's uh, free. And there's a bunch of paid um, add-ons. I think anyway, I'll find I'll I'll dig in and I'll try and find it. This is an alternative to BuddyPress, Tanya. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so BuddyPress is owned by Automatic, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, BuddyPress is free, so it's open source. Um, John James Jacoby is the main, the main dev on, on BuddyPress. <laughs> now, he actually ran a crowdfunding campaign recently to raise enough money so that he could take six months off and focus full-time on BuddyPress. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I mean, the te technology is, is, a, is an interesting one. Um, yep. But, but, but you know what? I'm like, you, know, you know, I'm a big fan of Facebook groups at the moment, man. I'm yeah, a, I'm a me big, too. I mean, we just started the Recurring Revenue Roadmap Facebook group, and we've got, like, it's been going a week, and we've got 370 members. Wow. So I've got a question about that, actually. Um, I've got two Facebook groups. One of them's got 1,500 members. The other one's got 2,500 members, and they're amazing. 
Yeah. Um, but th- but there's, there's only so much I can do in those groups. So I want to I want to do this other site that people people will have to pay for and that, I, that gives me enough money to hire hire my gin and tonic. Yep. Um, gin is my tonic. Yep. And and do it properly, really help people a lot more and do some training and stuff like that. Is it is it a crazy idea to have a free Facebook group and then a paid forum or is the Facebook group just going to be better because it's so much easier for people and it's going to be hard for them to convert? You know, it's really interesting we're having this conversation because my plan is this. My plan is to build recurring revenue roadmap. So here's a nugget for everyone on this call. If you want to get into the recurring revenue roadmap Facebook group, I'd do it now because at some point it's free, but at some point I'm going to start charging for access to that Facebook group. So the right. plan is once we get that up to a couple of thousand members and it's really active, then I think I'm just going to, which is what Ryan Levesque does. I mean, his membership mastermind is $97 a month and you just get access to his Facebook group and he delivers everything through his Facebook group. Wow. Yeah, That's it's interesting. really interesting, isn't it? Um, so, so do you think having the free Facebook group and the paid forum is a bad idea? No, I don't. I just think it's, I don't think it's a bad idea at all, but I just think it's, you just have to be really aware that it's just really difficult to get engagement in a in a in a private forum, um, for the exact reasons yeah. that you've spoken about. So, um, you know, you, you could have a free Facebook group and then you could have a paid Facebook group. I, I would just be, I mean, <clears throat> we, we we're kind of stuck in WP Elevation because our members are all WordPress people, so we have to build everything on WordPress because you know WordPress people yeah. are just like Star Trekies. You know, they're just <laughs> crazy about WordPress. So yeah. we kind of have to build everything on WordPress. That's why I couldn't use something like Discourse to run our forums because we just get right. a lot of pushback. Oh, why isn't it built on WordPress? So. Mm. Whereas the recurring revenue roadmap thing, I'll be very reluctant before I spin up a WordPress site for that. I reckon I'll just try and do everything through the Facebook group because it's just it's much lower overhead and it, and the engagement is just much much higher. Yeah, th- yeah, it's true. But I think there's there's only so much you can do in a Facebook group. Like it's really hard to manage like central resources of things, like things like training or or like conversations around a particular topic. Like it's people go into this. Um, into into my Facebook group and and you wouldn't have a clue what's in there. Like we've got amazing conversations about Instagram and Periscope and yeah. all this kind of stuff. You'd never even know that stuff was in there. So it's I don't know it's it's kind of tricky. Yeah, it is tricky. I mean, the search in the Facebook group is pretty good. I, I find the the group search is pretty good. You can you can add files into the file repository in the Facebook group. And what 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 we've got is we've got a pinned post at the top of our Facebook group. And so what I'm gradually doing is I'm just gonna gradually be finding like core training and linking to that core training in the Facebook group in the pinned post. So as soon as you log in, you just basically see like a table of contents of this is what's in the Facebook group. But yeah, Mm. look, it's a different beast to a forum. Uh, the, the name, what's the recurring revenue roadmap is the name of the Facebook group you're talking about Yeah, here? so I've actually got a short link. It's just um, R-E-V-R-E-V. So that's revrev.me slash FB for Facebook. So revrev.me slash FB, and that'll get you to the Facebook group. Cool. C- can someone put that into the comments so, so people people know what that is? Um, yeah. uh, Tanya said she, she had an alternative view on Facebook and she's worried that you don't own it. I I don't really share that view because I think that's sort of like an old school way of thinking where like you're trying to absolutely own everything. And I think the way the web is going now, like I think it's, it's, it's gone past that already. Like there's so many different platforms that you're building up this authority on. Like you don't own your followers on Periscope. You don't own your followers on Twitter. Um, but I just think it's, I, I, I'd be worried that Facebook are going to change the rules with, with groups, but I wouldn't be super concerned that you don't actually own it because um the majority of like the majority of attention I get for my stuff is through networks that I don't own. Like, like yeah. yesterday I had 200 or I had about 180 people sign up for my Thunderclap campaign yeah, to that. launch my next book. Um, and I didn't send a single email. Yeah. All I did was put it on Facebook. Yeah, that's so right. I, I don't, I'm not worried about not, not owning stuff. I, I think with Facebook specifically, I think I would be a little bit worried about them changing the rules because they have got a history of that. That's what I'm more worried about than than ownership. And the, the, and Facebook have actually shut down some groups that are like they have shut down some like internet marketing kind of you know biz op you know yeah um, make money from home kind of groups. So but you know look digital marketer. Um, Ryan Dice and Richard Linder, they just came out and ran Traffic and Conversion Summit that I spoke at in Sydney on the weekend. They have a Facebook group with like, it's a premium Facebook group, members only. They've got 6,500 members in there. So they've put a, they've put a lot of um, eggs in that basket, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm not too concerned. I mean, you know, Nick Bowditch, who used to work at Facebook, he spoke at that event as well. As a result of the conversation that he and I had about community and recurring revenue, the day after that event, he started a premium Facebook group, which is I think 47 bucks a month, and he had 50 members join in a heartbeat, 
and uh, it's a paid Facebook group. And he used to work at Facebook, so I, rec- you know, I don't think he's too concerned about them changing the rules. Um, yeah. So, but look, it is, it is. Look, definitely, it is a concern. You build something on someone else's technology; it's always going to be, a, it's always going to be a concern. Yeah, I, I think it's it's um, LinkedIn private groups. I think Tanya said, "What about LinkedIn groups?" I just I just find LinkedIn so damn spammy. I just don't want to ever ever go there if yeah, I can avoid it. How about I, you? I, I must admit, I'm the same. Hey, you know, there's there's I, mean, I don't mean to hijack the conversation, but there's one thing we haven't spoken about, which is the idea of recurring revenue. I think the big myth, and it's all, it's great to talk about all the technology and engagement and stuff that we have been talking about, but I think there's a big misunderstanding with recurring revenue. I think the big thing that most people miss, and I'd like to get your take on this, is that in order to create recurring revenue, you have to find a way to add recurring value, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> and you've done that really well with WP Curve. I mean, it's a bit of a no-brainer, and you've, you've blazed the trail in that space. Um, have you found any, like, you know, have, I, I just can't, I can't think of a business model yet where it can't be done, but it does actually require to think right outside the box. I mean, look at GoGet or FlexiCar. They're doing car subscriptions now, so car ownership mm. becomes car subscriptions. Um, yeah. There's a pizza shop in New York City that charge you $20 a month to be a member, and as a member, you get the privilege of buying their most expensive gourmet pizzas, which are members-only pizzas. <laughs> I mean, it's genius, isn't it? Nice. Um, um, I, I also noticed uh, the, the startup podcast by Gimlet yes, uh, yesterday yesterday, I listened to their episode and they announced that they're going to do a $5 a month thing where you can get get like the, the beta versions of, of episodes that they're putting out, um, which is interesting. But, but this this is an ongoing challenge for us at WP Curve is retention and churn. Yeah. And, and the issue really is if people stop using the service, they're much more likely to cancel. Yeah. And I'm not convinced that you, it works for every business. I think um, – a lot of people don't want to repay, pay a recurring fee for something. And yeah. if they had a good solution to only pay when they use something, I think a lot of people would take that option. But the problem is that there's not a lot of good solutions for that. And yeah. the reason there's not a good solution for that is because it's very hard to build a business that doesn't have consistent revenue. It's really hard to um, plan ahead, to hire people, to invest in the systems. Yep. So what ends up, ends up happening is you get these marketplace sites that give a crappy service yep. and people get burnt out on that. So they just say, well, well, well I'm just going to pay a recurring fee for something. But but yep. it, it is a real challenge for us um, making sure people use the service regularly. And and I think for for some business, it just works amazingly well. Like, you know, like phone, you know, mobile phone, you, yeah. you're not going to cancel. Yeah. Hosting, you're not going to cancel yep. unless the host does a bad job. Yep. You're not going to cancel. Yep. Um, but other businesses, it's a much bigger challenge. Have you? What's your onboarding process like when someone signs up? Uh, I, I, let, me, let me just give you a quick example. When I signed up for Zirtual, which is an um, uh, Zirtual are American-based virtual assistants, right? When I signed yep. up for Zirtual, the, the reality is when I signed up for Zirtual, I was really crap at delegating tasks, right? Mm. I, I just I, I kind of knew it, but I was in denial about it because we all like to think that we're the above average driver in the family, right? And yep. so when I signed up for Zirtual, they sent me a series of emails with templates, email templates that actually taught me how to delegate to my Zirtual assistant. And they mm. also outlined the types of tasks that I could delegate to them. So within yep. the first, and then they sent me an email every day, basically <laughs> saying, "You haven't delegated anything to Kristen yet. Why not? Huh. These are the kind of tasks you can delegate. And here's a here's an email template to copy and paste to delegate or something." So I, I was like, I remember <coughs> kind of shitting my pants, going, "I'm going to delegate something to this girl who lives in Philadelphia that I've never met, and you know, I have to let go of the reins." And I delegated the first thing to her and went to sleep that night because of the time zone, woke up and then my inbox was full of goodness the next morning and I was like, oh my God, this just changed my life. But they actually coached me through the whole delegation process. So what's your onboarding process like in, or your re-engagement process if people haven't used the, pro, haven't, haven't used the service for a couple of weeks? That's, that's interesting. I think we can definitely do better with that. We, we do a weekly email with, which suggests ideas, but I think it could be better because often they'll get the idea and it just won't be relevant to them. You know, it might be like, do you have Google Analytics on your site? If not, reply to this email and we'll set it up for you. Yeah, gotcha. um, But, you know, if they've got Google Analytics already, it's it's pretty much a wasted email. Yeah. Um, so we can definitely get better at that. The interesting thing about what you described is pointing out to the customer that they're not using the service. That's, that's an interesting one because I wonder if that would prompt some churn um, or if, if, they, if they've worked out that, yes, maybe it prompts a little bit of churn, but for the most part, it reactivates people, and if they reactivate, they'll stay, stay a customer for life. Okay, here's an idea. You use Infusionsoft, don't you? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if you don't use Infusionsoft. You can do this with Active Campaign, which is a lot cheaper than Infusionsoft, or you could do it with Agile CRM, which is even cheaper than that. Um, what I would do, so for everyone listening, you don't have to use Infusionsoft, but what I would do is I would have, like, 
what are the top 10 things that they can that you can do on their website that's going to give them a quick win so google analytics is one maybe some lead capture forms is another one maybe setting up the monarch plugin for social sharing is another one and then i would say hey here are the top 10 ideas we think that we can help you get some quick wins on your website just click on the one that appeals to you the most right and then yeah. in, and then those links are tagged and so whatever they click on automatically tags them in the CRM half an hour later send them another email that says hey thanks for clicking on the fact that you want some social sharing on your website um, we're all ready to go to install some social sharing uh, buttons on your website just reply to this email and give us the go ahead and we'll do it and then they go yes yep. please done so that they, they're only getting a follow-up email based on what it is that they've expressed interest in. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool. Um, does anyone have a qu any questions about that? I was I was just thinking, as you said, that one thing we do when people sign up, we do like an 18-point website evaluation for them. And that sends them a big, long email that um, gives them a bunch of things that they can improve on their site. And then they can just reply and get those things done. But thinking about it, it's probably a bit too much all at once. I, th I think it might be better if we sort of space that out a little bit and and suggest you know one or two jobs a month rather than you know fifteen jobs at the start. Yeah, yeah, yep. So I think this the, is good stuff. I think the learning here is that you just have to think like and the, the other one, the other one that um, the other one that I think is really the, the low hanging fruit is reporting, which is something that I don't think anyone's really got right yet. Is is showing the client every month how the services is helping their business or how, you know, this is what we've done this month on your website or, you know, this is, this is basically, this is the value that we've added. This is how you've benefited this month. If you can. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, I think you hit the nail on the head before. A lot of people are scared about doing that because you might, that you might actually remind them that they're paying for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well included on the invoice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th there is, there's a service actually, I, I can't remember the name of it, but there's, there's a service that, that, um, creates retention focused emails um invoices so so it'll i think it connects with stripe and then it'll send your customers an invoice each month and but then in that invoice it will have stuff in there that that encourages them to be retained so it'll have like the jobs they requested or a bit of information or some or some something like that gotcha <laughs> sorry just trying not to cough um yeah Wow, there's been a lot of good stuff in here. Hopefully the people on here are getting value out of this. Um, I know I certainly am. It's yeah. been amazing. Oh, good, um, man. Excellent. I think, I think that's probably about enough. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, give, me, give us some laugh hearts if you're happy with this content and it's been useful. Anything else, Troy? No, man, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to um, pop my Periscope cherry because this is the first time <laughs> I've actually been on Periscope. So uh, I'm, I'm chuffed, man. Thanks very much for the opportunity. And keep up the well, good work, man. I'm loving everything you're doing. Thank you. Thanks for coming on this. Have you done your own Periscope call yet? Not yet, man, but I'm, uh, okay, I'm, well, I'm going to Well, now. you haven't been on Periscope yet as far as I'm concerned. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, looking, I'm uh, looking forward to your call. If you put a, put a comment in the... Um, in the comments on this call and, and people can click your name and follow you so they can jump on your first call. Okay. Where will this live? So Tanya, um, I signed up for a service called catch.me, K-A-T-C-H.me, and that automatically records all of my uh, Periscope calls. And if you go catch.me forward slash the Dan Norris, T-H-E Dan Norris, you can see all of my calls up there. It's, it's only the last two or three because I wasn't doing it before, but, but it'll keep them for more than 24 hours. So you can look back through this. I think you can even move... Uh, like forward and back in the presentation, which you can't do on Periscope itself. So, so that's cool. Um, I just I just flicked you a link in Skype too, Dan, um, to a thing called getamity.com. Uh, they've got a free article: ten tactics to quickly reduce churn. So uh, I thought that might be uh, might be good reading for a bit later on. Oh, that's very cool. Um, I'll check that out. Uh, catch k a t c h dot me is the is the name. The, the other thing you can do if you're on a Periscope call is just put hashtag catch k a t c h into the call and Cat will automatically record that Periscope call even if it's not yours, which is cool. cool. That's awesome. Yeah, there's going to be some really interesting businesses come out on Periscope. I was talking to my buddy Shane who's working on a thing where he'll ask people to put their email address in the comment and his script will automatically pick that email up and put it in their CRM. Oh, man. <laughs> so That's people can people can sweet. scrape the comments in Periscope wow. and you know there's going to be all sorts of opportunities to create it from that. Wow. Awesome. All righty. Cool, mate. Thanks, man. <clears throat> Thank you again. Keep up the great work and uh, say hi to the beach for me. I, I will do. All right, guys. Thanks so much um, for coming on this call. I hope it's been useful and I'll see you guys next time.